Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the... Wait, this isn't the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to talk about Tesla. So if you guys like the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. would love to have you join. Uh, we typically talk about cryptocurrency like Bitcoin and Ethereum using more of a data science approach than you'll find most other places. Uh, but today we're going to talk about Tesla. We're going to be looking at logarithmic regression and under and overvaluation of the, of the Tesla stock. Um, in addition to that, we're going to be looking at various... Uh, you know, comparisons of price with respect to, say, volume and percentage changes of volume. And then finally, we're going to look at, you know, statistically speaking, is there a better day to buy Tesla? And is there, in general, a, a worse day to buy Tesla? So we're just going to use all sorts of uh, models uh, that I've developed, and we're just going to go systematically through this. So again, please subscribe to the channel. would love to have you join. I'm going to try to expand this from, from just looking at cryptocurrency into some uh, other stocks because, or you know, or stocks in general, precious metals, uh, commodities. I think it's important that that people are, are diversified, um, and so you know we can mark this as as near the beginning. We have done some videos before, but this is one of the first one of the first videos that we've done um, that we veer away from cryptocurrency. So check out the Telegram channel if you guys want to discuss this stuff, and also the premium list here if you if you want more content. So the first thing we have here is just the logarithmic regression. Um, fit that I've done to the Tesla price. So we have daily price data for Tesla going back to 2010. And then our red line is our, our, you know, our fair value regression fit. So you can think of this as, you know, if it's, if it's under it, you, you might say, okay, well, it's, it's undervalued. Or sorry, yeah, yeah, it's undervalued. If it's over it, overvalued. Um, so in a sense here, we were, we were at our undervaluation point here again, we were overvalued in 2014 and 2015, and now we're approaching that same overvaluation point, um, this year potentially. So we would only need to go up another few hundred dollars to reach this, um, overvaluation line. Uh, the orange line you hear that you see here is just the quarterly revenue, um, now I'm not plotting anything against it, it's just it's overlaid on the secondary y-axis so that you can see how the price moves when the revenue moves. Here's an example where the revenue started to rapidly go up and it was a leading indicator before the price really started to move up. Um, over here this isn't, it wasn't really the case, but again we, we were at that undervaluation line and this is ultimately where we bounced off of. We came back up almost to a thousand, back down to being undervalued, and then and then straight back up. So in a sense, if you wanted to use this to try to time, I mean this is not financial advice by any means, but if you wanted to try to you know time your entry into the market, it might be useful to say look at at when we're in our undervaluation phase or our overvaluation phase, or if you are deciding to buy at this point, to just know that based on historical data, we might be capped up in this region in the short term. But again, the regression equation is monotonically increasing, so uh, more than likely time is going to be on our side. I, I continue, you know, I, I suspect that, that Tesla will continue to go up in price um, over the next several years, assuming, I mean, this of course is assuming um, we don't just have a complete global meltdown. Uh, but despite Elon Musk saying that it's, it's um, overvalued, uh, we've continued to move on up. Now, one of the things I want to I want you to note is our, this red line here is our fair valuation line. So the idea is, well, can we look at say the percent difference between the price and the fair valuation line? And that's this line. So at a hundred percent, this means we're at our perfect our fair valuation. When we're down here, you know, around say negative fifty percent or so, this tends to be the local bottom. So if you see us coming back down to this region. Uh, it could present a timely opportunity. Um, despite the fact that we've been moving up significantly, we're only about, uh, we're, we're basically at 150% uh, over. So, if, well, I guess if you think about it as if 100% is, is our fair valuation, then we're only, you know, we're only about 50% above that. Uh, but know that last time we, we really shot, shot up over back in, in say 2014, 2015, we went up all the way to, you know, 250% or so. So there, there still could be a significant uh, room to move up. Um, I know a lot of people are, are very wary with the economy and, and where it may be headed, but 
again, I don't think, if you think of it just say like his Brownian motion in a sense or a random walk, I don't really necessarily think that anyone is capable of predicting short term price movements consistently. And if they are, uh, they're probably not advertising it to the world anyways. Um, on this channel, we tend to look at macro level moves and, and to you know time key momentum shifts in the market. Um, and we actually even made a video on Tesla over here uh, when it had come back down to being undervalued, um, if you go back and look a few months ago. So this chart here shows our volume differential versus the daily percentage price change. So I know that might be kind of confusing, but it's just looking at the difference in volume from day to day and then the percentage change of price from day to day. So each point represents a day and they're color coded based on time. So we're going from 2010 to 2020. So I think it's interesting, you know, you it, it makes sense, it makes intuitive sense when you're seeing daily percentage change, changes that are significant, like 15, 20%, they're basically always accompanied by a commensurate increase in, in volume. Um, the same thing when we see a negative price movement. Uh, it's also accompanied by, uh, you know, a commensurate um, change in the daily volume. But of course, looking at just the absolute value of the volume, uh, maybe not doesn't make a whole lot of sense because as you know, as you know, as the price grows, there's going to be more and more volume. Let's look at the daily volume percentage change. This is what it looks like. Uh, but the unfortunate consequence of doing this is that you get a few points up here that are um, that you know basically make it hard to understand really what's going on in this region. Uh, so what we'll have to do is we take the the Log, we, we plot this on a logarithmic scale, so we're looking at 10x, 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 and we're just plotting the absolute value of it. So you can see the kind of this triangle uh, that it forms, um, and ultimately speaking, you know, when, when you're seeing these, uh, the, the percent moves, you can see as we, as we go up, so if, as you go up from, say, um, 0 to 5 to 10 to 15 to 20, you, you see, you have to see um, commensurate increases in volume. Otherwise, you know, if you didn't, you might just see a rectangle where it just doesn't really matter. But you can see that as we, as the price moves up on a single day or down on a single day, the volume is also moving with it. So if you see the volume of, of Tesla really moving uh, one day, then, um, you know, it's, 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 it's more likely to be associated with a significant price move. I mean, this is not um, any, any crazy insight. I mean, anyone, anyone knows that um, price moves are associated with um, volume changes, but I just thought it'd be kind of interesting to visualize it. Um, this plot shows the price of Tesla versus the daily volume. So I thought it was interesting because if you if you kind of plot the trend line here, um, you can kind of see some zigzag patterns uh, basically on then a move up, and you can kind of see these lines that form. But if we were to stay within this, uh, you know, this projection here. 10 to the 6 is a, is a daily volume of a million, so this would be 10 million, 100 million, maybe two, 300 million, and you know if you see the daily volume getting that high, then it could, you know, it very well could get us to say another 10x from here in terms of the price, We're talking about $10,000, um, but even just say getting to 100 million might be what we need in order for the price to reach say three or four thousand dollars. Um, so I think this is a pretty interesting chart to to look at as well. Now, this is great and all, right? We, we like looking at all these models, but is there anything we can you know, squeeze out of the, this information and essentially you know, take it to the bank where we can, we can plan our moves in a way that can um, benefit us over the macro scale? Um, before we continue, I'll just remind you to please subscribe to the channel if you guys like the content. Uh, we, we typically talk about cryptocurrency, but we are going to be expanding the channel to talk about other things like um, uh, stocks, precious metals. If you guys have any recommendations to what this channel, what you would like to see covered, then leave it, leave a note down in the description or in the comment section below. Um, and definitely subscribe so, so we can continue to, to stay up to date. Um, so the question is, what is the best data by Tesla? So is there, statistically speaking, can we look back and see, had you been buying on a certain day, would you have been better off than buying on, say, a different day? And the way we're just going to look at it, uh, it's it's pretty simple. It's uh, completely simplifying it to some degree. I could certainly go into a lot more detail, and I probably will in future videos. But let's just keep this, you know, this 
one of the first videos, just super simple. So I think it's easy, easy to follow along. So we're basically looking, we're first looking at 2010. If you break it down by day of the week, what is the average percent move? Okay, so this is a percentage. Um, what is the average percent move from open to close that day? Okay, so in 2010, the average percent move on say a Monday was negative 0.25%. On Tuesday, it was 0.4, Wednesday, 0.75, and then Thursday and Friday, it was negative. Um, so during this first year, on average, you would have seen, you know, had you been buying uh, first thing on Tuesday, then on average, the price by closing time would have been approximately 0.4% higher, and on, on Wednesdays, 0.75% uh, higher. So you could argue maybe that Tuesday morning could have been a decent time to buy, or Monday at close. And then, um, and then you know, Wednesday at close would essentially uh, mark a potential short-term move to the downside, on average, of course. If you look locally, you're you're gonna find times where the complete opposite happens. Um, this is just on average. We're not even showing, say, standard deviations or you know, like an error bar. We're just taking the, the pure numbers, um, averaging them out, and seeing what we get. So in 2011, uh, this is what we had. Uh, I'm not gonna go through every single year. We're gonna just get a general synopsis of it. Um, but you can see we more or less uh, are fluctuating between like negative one to one. Um, and what you notice is as we, you know, as we continue to march on, there's more and more days where on average, they're positive, um, especially as we get into these later years. Now, is there anything we can take from this uh, that can that can help us like is there any is there is there a way to deduce well if this is negative and negative and positive and positive now what's something we can we can look at well one of the things we can look at is um first just highlighting what is you know where where do where do we tend to be positive you can see that in the last few years the beginning of the week um tends to be a better time to to purchase Tesla uh, than the end of the week because if you're say purchasing it on Fridays, I mean Fridays is by far the worst day to, or one of the worst days to to buy Tesla because you can see that on average most of the years if you had purchased it at open, then by close close of business, um, you would have actually been sitting at a loss already and. You know, there's, it's certainly not a great feeling when you put money into the market and then a few hours later you're already, you know, you're, you already see a loss. I mean, no one wants to see that. Um, but on average, doing, you know, investing on say Monday or Tuesday tends to be a lot better. Now, if we count them, so what are the best and worst days if you count them by year? So out of the 11 years we have, so 2010 to 2020, the number, you know, the number of years where Monday was the best day to buy on average was four, and Tuesday was four. So eight out of the eleven years, the best times to buy would have been Monday or Tuesday. Um, Wednesday only coming in at two, Thursday one, and Friday zero. So there was not a single year where, statistically speaking, um, looking at you know averaging it out over every single uh, day of the week over that year. Uh, Friday was never the best day to buy at open. Um, now, what is the worst day? You can see that Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday all had a single year where they would have been the worst day. But Thursday and Friday were the worst days eight of the 11 years. So in terms of buying Tesla at open, Monday and Tuesday would have been your best bet over the, 11, over the last 11 years and Thursday and Friday would have been your, your worst performers. Um, so I hope that makes sense. I, I hope I've explained that uh, well enough uh, that it's, it's useful. We know that you know, past results obviously don't care, guarantee anything uh, regarding the future, um, but you know, regardless, it's still interesting to, to look at this data and you know, I can package the data for you. It's, you know, I'm, I'm the data messenger in a sense, and then you can do whatever you wish with it. Maybe you think, oh, well, since this has been the trend so far, I'll take the, you know, the contrarian view or, or something like that. Um, so, you know, there, there's certainly a lot of different ways you can look at the data, um, but ultimately speaking, I, I think providing this type of data is useful. 
Um, and and if you you know if you stick with it over the macro scale and you're not a day trader, then I think it really could it could benefit you. So just going back to the beginning, remember this is our regression equation. Uh, looking at undervaluation versus overvaluation in terms of say getting to this overvaluation line, uh, we still have uh, a ways to go, and it might put us at around say uh, fourteen hundred dollars, fifteen hundred dollars by the time we get there. Um, but I, I I do think that that you know we certainly can make it there. Uh, and again, if if stocks if stocks really start to uh, take a downturn later this year, then obviously Tesla will most likely be affected. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Uh, let me know what you guys think about uh, covering other things on the channel uh, besides just cryptocurrency. If you guys like the idea of, of a more diversified approach, which I think is ultimately smart. One of the reasons why I'm doing this is in preparation for the fact that if you, know, if, if you are able to make a lot of money in cryptocurrency over the next several years during a potential uh, bull market, if we, if we think that lengthening cycle theory is true, then at some point there's going to be a come a, there's going to come a time where you're going to want to, you know, withdraw money from the crypto market and diversify it elsewhere. And by learning about this stuff now, if you're not already you know informed of it, then when the time that by the time that happens, you'll be ready to go. You'll know okay, the money's coming out of crypto. I'm putting it into into other markets. Um, I would recommend. You know, I mean, for me personally, I'm investing in and a lot of you know a lot of different markets not just crypto by any means um, but i do know a lot of people who watch the channel are, are mainly focused on crypto but again i think it's important to uh, to diversify if you can and uh, reduce your overall risk and exposure of a single market it's it's a lot better to you know to offset that risk by looking at, at several different markets um, so that if one market goes down like if you see a 10 percent drop in crypto in a day then maybe you're not seeing an entire 10 percent drop in your you know your overall net worth because hopefully you don't have 100 percent of your net worth invested in crypto um so i hope you guys like the content again if you do please subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on like the video um, leave a comment down below with what you think if you want to discuss the charts maybe i'll post a couple of them in my telegram channel you can see it here and you can find a link to it in the description below and if you want access to premium content with this graph updated fairly often, uh, then check out my website at intothecryptoverse.com. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. I will see you guys next time. Bye.